So dynamic tessellation is where we can apply some sculpting tools and we can get more geometry where we think we need it rather than an overall geometry. So this will give you triangles and quads in the place it thinks you need it based on a set of parameters. So let's take a look at the basics of this and then work up to seeing this character and how it's useful while you're doing character sculpts. Okay, so we've loaded in a primitive from the scene menu and we've just hit validate to make it a um, editable sphere. So we'll put on the wireframe and that means we can have a look at what's going on underneath. So it's basically a sphere made up of polygons, very, very normal. And if you've been doing this for a while, you know if you just take any of the brushes like clay and we sculpt on it, you'll affect the surface like that. Hold smooth over here on the right and you'll smooth it back down. That's the normal process that we use all the time. Eventually, the model gets to be a little bit stretched, the polygons get stretched or you get problems like here where you can see it's starting to triangulate a little, or not triangulate, but elongate the, the polygons. Uh, and it starts to get to a point where it's erroring. So there's two ways we do this. This is very common. Go up to the topology menu, we can subdivide and that gives us a smoother mesh, which is not the best way. It's the way we used to have to do that in ZBrush in, in the days gone by before we had things like DynaMesh. Um, but in here, what we would normally do is this, which is voxel remeshing. So pick a number, about three or 400, and hit remesh. Uh, the multi-resolution will be lost, because remember, we went subdivided it up, and we'll just click OK and let it calculate, and there you go. So it's done quite a high-resolution mesh. You can lower that by, let's go back down. So one, we didn't need to subdivide it in the first place. And two, we could lower the mesh. Hit remesh, okay, and there you go. It's a lower resolution. That's only 286,000. Or you could do even lower and go something like that. So that's the way we've, we've been working uh, for quite some time with, with most, most sculpting programs. So if I turn off the wireframe, and I use that as a process. So we've got clay, and I'm just gonna make some shapes, either indents or uh, surfaces. This is how we rough out any of any of our shapes. Um, so we build it up using things like move tool as well, move stuff around, um, any shape we want, and then hit remesh. And remember, you've got it down here at the bottom as well. And it remembers the last number. So as I'm working now, this is constantly Bit, we're having to call remesh constantly so here we go again and if we do a nose let's just start with um, clay again we have got to do a great big nose and see how it's starting to get fractured you'll see what I mean I'll leave the wireframe on so you can see and as soon as we get to that level we can either a smooth it down which helps but doesn't correct the the polygons or we can hit remesh and that's the very normal process of, of sculpting for, 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 for most, most people will be familiar with that in one form or another. In nearly all, all of the polygon based sculpting programs, both on the iPad and, and on, on, on the screen, screen based ones like ZBrush and, and Blender. Now, what we've also got is something called dynamic tessellation. And this is where it, it changes the underlying geometry as we go. So what does that mean? So we're in topology menu, come down to the bottom, or, or at least halfway down, you've got dynamic topology. So if we enable that, and you'll see what happens. So now, as we're working, I'll put wireframe on, and there's one little feature that I do like to put on here, which is close panel on interaction, turn that off. What that means is this panel stays open for you now. Um, so as I'm working now, what I might want to do is use this setting on. So, and that means I can go higher and lower on the detail again. It's very similar to what we did with the normal remeshing. And then you've got options down below. So let's just do it without any options and see what happens. So if I was to, first of all, do it just around the mouth and I just do this, it just looks like it's darker. So what's going on deep, deep, deep down? So what you're getting is a triangulation effect wherever I'm, I'm brushing. See how it's getting more and more as I get closer. If I zoom out now, that's an incredible amount of polygons just in that area. If I turn the wireframe off, 
and then you can see I've basically sculpted like this in that area and it's given me the the, the triangles or the quads or, or, or the, the, the geometry more more to the point wherever I need it so see I, I did a smooth so turn it on again and see what's happening when I smooth so if I stroke it's giving me polygons where I need them if I smooth it takes some of them away if I don't need it so let's try it on a lip so that looks good gives me lots of volume and it's changing the underlying geometry as I work. And this is the same in lots and lots of programs. It's it's a very, very common way now. It came to something called ZBrush from a program called uh, Sculptress. And then that in ZBrush became Sculptress Pro. And that's what you see when the, there's a little icon that you turn on. I did a video earlier this week that's a type of this uh, modeling is available now in VR which is one of the, the reasons that triggered me to do this video because I thought it it needs to be explained and as I'm sculpting it's just giving me what I want wherever I want it um, if I needed more detail I would go up and then what you'll see now is it changes based on whether I need it so for example if I wanted to go really close in or with a really small brush and do let me let me do a, a negative so I'll do a sub and I'll do down here, you can see how black it goes. And if I turn the wireframe off now, you can see why that's happening. Because it's trying to get a, 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 an indent or a crease, it's asking for more polygons. So you can see, I'll smooth it down. I'm, I'm just gonna smooth all of that work that I did down. You can see now if I do it, do it around here. And another brush to use, uh, to give you a good example here, is the crease brush. So let's just come down here to find crease brush. And now if I do a crease, you can see now what's happening there. It's giving me the normal kind of wrinkles and the, the, the normal uh, indents into the surface that I'd want when I'm sculpting. Um, and what that then looks like with the wireframe on is this. So as I go close in, if I was to do surface detail on the, on the lip like that, you can see how many polygons that's given me, and it's, it's, it's giving you quite a high resolution mesh. But look at that surface detail. I can smooth it back, and it'll take some of them away. But this is a very common way to, to um, uh, work instead of using the remesh option all the time. So what does that look like on um, uh, a, a more finished piece? So let's go and have a look at something we've already done here. So we'll turn that one off and we'll have a look at this guy. Um, and what you're looking at here is uh, an already finished model. It's been in and out of Nomad. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's getting all its primary forms are done and it's well on the way. Let's have a look. It's got, a, it's got a, you can tell it's had a predictable set of geometry made for it at some point. So what happens now if I use this same tool? So we'll use crease again and we'll just do some of the surface detail now. So I'll do some, some creases down here. And you can see that it's giving me nice wrinkles. I did a video recently, again, I'll link it up above about how to make dam, a dam standard brush. So dam standard is a brush from ZBrush that everybody loves because it scores these really cool lines in the surface. Um, and I did a little uh, quick video, um, which again, you can just have a quick look at it when you get a minute. Um, shows you how to make some of this without using the crease brush but look at that there wherever I'm drawing that 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 surface detail or indenting here if I do if I do for example veins or something like that the exact opposite smooth that down a bit but look at the wireframe now so nothing's happening here because there's plenty of geometry to play with but the minute I put on the you know, You'll see it now. The minute I put on dynamic topology, look at what happens there. Turn the wireframe off, and it's giving me a much nicer effect. So it's a, it's giving me more geometry. See it? Look at the creases there. So that's definitely definitely giving me a much nicer effect because it's giving me just the higher resolution wherever I need it. And if I was to smooth all this down, watch, literally use smooth here, it takes that away. So it takes that geometry away. Um, and again, with the wireframe off, 
doesn't make any difference. It still looks good. It's because simply because we're, we're using, um, if, we don't, if we're not neat, if the geometry isn't needed, it just gets rid of it and it smooths it back down to a, to a lower polygon count. So have a go at this with, with your modeling process and try it in two ways. Try it at the start of the process. So when you're doing your initial block out and when you're doing all of your major, um, your initial primary forms, then try and use th this kind of te technique um, where you'd move something out and just let the geometry do it with dynamic topology on. And then maybe you could bring two things together. So if I started to work this down to, to a body and you wanted to bring in, say, a sphere and, and, and merge it back in, have dynamic topology on. And you can try that again, with, you know, and, and see how far that gets you. Um, it's a different. It's it's the same. Um, it's still polygons, so it's still the same uh, underlying maths going on. But what what it's doing is it, it's implementing it in a different way. Um, and then once you've finished, at some point, you could just say dynamic topology off, uh, and then you don't start losing it. Um, you, what you don't want to be doing is doing this when you're getting to a level where your models. Um, you know, nearly finished and looking good. You don't want it to destroy any of the work you've done underneath. There's a couple of options here. You've got speed against quality. Um, so have a play with that to see if that's something that works um, for, for your process. It, it 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 didn't. I didn't find that it affected me too much. Um, it says there. There's a there's a, a a little icon that gives you the the, the exact um, readout of what. It, it does in those two methods. So if you choose quality, the two main differences are refinement is applied before sculpting operator and you'll get less interpolation artifact when painting or sculpting very small details. So obviously you want better quality, put that one on. Or if you want better quality, put that one on. Um, and then refinement is if you sculpt very small details, do quick strokes, the topology will, will be correctly refined. For better performance, if you plan on using this option, you might consider enabling the partial drawing option in the settings panel as well. So there are more settings that can help you. The zoom is you get more if you're zoomed in. So there's more zoomed in you get, the more um, you'll see it if you turn the wireframe on. So the more zoomed in you get, the higher the resolution. So if I go back out, that'll look completely black now. And that's because it's getting, you know, it's it, from this distance, it'll give you one effect. From this distance, it'll give you another. From this distance, another. So just be mindful of that one if, if you put that one on. Um, I, I leave it on radius. And you can do pressure sensitivity as well. So if you switch that one on, the harder you press, the more you get. So it's just normal pressure sensitivity. So overall, there's quite a few things to play with in there. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of ways to enhance your model once you're getting to the detail stage. But don't forget, you can use it in the early stages when you're doing your block outs. You're not just limited to doing a remesh all the time. Now, one thing that is interesting with this um, is if you mask off an area, so if I hold down uh, my uh, SEL mask, cell mask, let's go drag down to it. I always find it a little bit harder to find things when I've got them down the side. So I normally like them to be up here like this. But when I've got the panel on, um, close panel on interaction on, it's not as easy to see. So if I just do a square and I mask off half of this model like this. Oops, got symmetry on there, so like this. And then let's have a look underneath. So we've got our wireframe here. Now if I draw, obviously it's masked, and if we go back and we do, say, a crease, you can see what's happening there. So it's giving me the what you would expect. It's giving me the, the lines in the surface. But watch what happens. Obviously, you, you know, you can predict what's going to happen here. Nothing happens into the masked area. So why is that important? Well, that means you can mask off an area while you're working on it. So you might not want to affect, for example, you might not want to affect the eye. So if I do uh, a mask around here, and then I work around with something like smooth or... Um, let me just go on to smooth there smooth for example it's not affecting anywhere close to the eye where 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 it's masked so just you know bear that in mind that that that, 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 that there's that option as well to protect an area while you're working on it and it won't remesh 
um, or it, it won't dynamically uh, remesh behind that. Um, and that's, that's a great way of, of when you're doing details, just protecting areas you've already got details in. I hope you're enjoying these videos. And if you are, please consider giving us a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other artists when they come to YouTube. If you do enjoy it, uh, please consider subscribing. So we, we put content out every Wednesday and every Friday. And it's all about how to create in new and innovative ways in all kinds of things like VR on the iPad. And obviously with programs like ZBrush and Blender and plenty of other programs we've used over the years.